Humanity pumps more CO2 into the atmosphere faster every year from fossil fuels, trapping more heat, and the planet is getting warmer. On these facts, all scientists agree. The only remaining debate is about how fast it's happening and what the consequences will be. But we must act decisively now to avoid possibly catastrophic outcomes. To wait would be foolhardy. We're simply running out of time. In global climate change, we're doing an experiment. We're out there, and the, the, the Earth is our laboratory. And we're, 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 we're stressing the Earth. We're putting in a, uh, we're increasing greenhouse gases and see how the Earth responds. It's going to respond how it's going to respond. You know, we're not going to, we don't have much control over it except for how much uh, greenhouse gas we put in. We have dramatically increased the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Uh, from pre-industrial levels, we were at 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide. We're now at 380. And most people think that if you get to 550, which is a doubling, uh, you're going to dramatically ruin uh, the climate of this country for the next 50 generations. There are scientists, some good ones. There's one here at MIT that thinks worry about climate change is overblown. Well, a lot of his colleagues here disagree with them, but there are some tipping points out there that are real. We just don't know where they are. If we don't start doing things soon, you know, we may start looking at 750 as a realistic choice. When you start getting up to 750, we just don't know what's, it's just going to be a very different place. The magnitude of the change would be so big, you know, the, the question is how much of a risk do you want to take? The uncertainties that we have about the future are going to start to go away because if you don't try to reduce emissions, you end up, you know, pouring so much CO2 into the atmosphere that you eliminate uncertainties. In other words, the uncertainty that you might have between stabilizing at 450 parts per million and 650, that's a large uncertainty. Uh, but the difference between stabilizing at 650 and 750 is meaningless. Both of them are a catastrophe for us. So even though some of these theories are, are you know, are unproven, how much are you willing to gamble on that? We are at about 7.5 billion metric tons of carbon each year we pour into the atmosphere. Uh, and about 60% stays in the atmosphere and the rest goes into the soil and oceans. And uh, on our current trend, in the next 50 years, we will double that. And so to avoid that, you have to find a place, you know, you have to, through efficiency or clean energy, De find a place for that other 7.5 billion metric tons of carbon. One idea for releasing less CO2 into the atmosphere is called CCS, for carbon capture and storage, meaning that CO2 is pumped into deep underground repositories. This makes the most sense for coal-fired plants because they're stationary and because they're already the source of 37% of our CO2 today. But the sheer quantity of CO2 is already daunting, and yet, Hundreds more coal-fired plants are to be built in the next 15 years without CCS, 140 of them in the U.S. alone. One billion metric tons of carbon a year, if you turn it into supercritical carbon dioxide and put it in, in deep underground aquifers, geologic repositories, that is the equivalent CO2 flowing into the ground as the amount of oil flowing out of the ground today. We're talking about creating an equivalent of the entire oil industry just for dealing with carbon dioxide, and that's just one of seven or eight things you have to do. So it's a massive engineering enterprise. CCS is not a panacea. That's why I call it a bridging strategy. It's not the end point, but, but at least it could buy us some time and it, it could set some prices in the market that, that are realistic it sends the right signals. Right now, the right signals aren't being sent, so we're not going in the right direction. We're going in the wrong direction. The advocates of this in the Bush administration, their effort, which they call Future Gen, uh, to develop uh, and test a plant over 10 or 15 year period, it looks like it's an effort to put off action today. Uh, and unfortunately, you can't put off action today because the actions that need to be taken are not simple or trivial. They are, they are of a scale equivalent to uh, the Manhattan Project, 
uh, or the Apollo mission. And if you do nothing for the next 20 years, then the only way to do it is, is very onerous government intervention in the marketplace. Uh, and it's kind of ironic because the people who oppose action today, they oppose action because they don't want the government to intervene in our lives. So, you know, at this point, people shouldn't get depressed. They should just get informed, get angry, and then get politically active. It's not too late. So the problem is if you wait 10, 15 years, then the amount of reduction you have to do and the time you have drops considerably. So you then get into kind of a desperation mode. And I think the world will be a very different place uh, in the year uh, 2020 and beyond. Mm -hmm.